Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar, another webinar of the Future Classroom Lab titled Active Learning in the Classroom of the Future. My name is Kostantinos Andronikidis. I work for European Schoolnet, and I have the pleasure to be your host today. Before we start introducing our speakers, and for those that do not know us, European Schoolnet is a network of 34 ministries of education, and our goal is to support education stakeholders in Europe and beyond in the transformation of education processes. The Future Classroom Lab is an initiative of European Schoolnet and an inspirational learning environment in Brussels that challenges visitors to rethink the role of pedagogy, technology, and design in their classrooms. Today's webinar is organized in collaboration with i3 Technologies, a leading manufacturer of interactive technologies for group collaboration. Um, i3 Technologies is one of the partners of the Future Classroom Lab, and we are happy to be joined today by experts who will introduce us to the idea of active learning and how, through this approach, teachers can better engage students in their learning uh, process and encourage them to think critically, creatively, and collaboratively. Uh, so, without further ado, I will welcome now online uh, Jeroen de Kaiser, a Head of Education at i3 Technologies. Um, welcome, Jeroen. Thank you, Konstantinos. Uh, Jeroen will introduce us to the topic and uh, share some insights on active learning in various settings and scenarios. Uh, after this, he will also introduce us to three educators from different countries who will share with us their experience using active learning pedagogy in their lessons and how you can also introduce such practices in your classroom. After their presentation, we will have some time to address any comments or questions you might have. So feel free to share your thoughts, uh, comments or questions in the Q&A section of the platform that you are following us. So now uh, I give the floor to Jeroen uh, to start with the presentation and later on to have the discussion with the educators. Jeroen, the floor is yours. Thanks so much for the introduction, uh, Konstantinos. Thanks for uh, partnering with us for this uh, most interesting webinar, I'm sure. Um, happy to be here. Hello to everyone, wherever you are and however early or late it is at your place. Um, so I'm indeed um, Jeroen, uh, Head of Education at i3 Technologies. And for those who do not know i3 Technologies, I can uh, briefly introduce the company to, um, to you. So um, in um, what we do is we do offer interactive learning and collaboration uh, ecosystem. So we call it a complete ecosystem. Um, we are definitely known because of the interactive touch screens that we that we manufacture, but we also do have accompanying software. Um, we have accessories that uh, are also um, matching the entire uh, ecosystem. And of course, we also focus on software, educational software. Now, um, the uh this is this is an overview here you can see an overview of our complete solution um nothing is is given so it's really tailor-made uh if you're interested of course we can help you out here uh we do want to be the bridge between uh analog and, and digital teaching uh, because we are truly convinced that um yeah teaching through the ages has never changed too much technology can help uh, but we should never forget where uh, education originally started and that's way ago of course uh, in an analog way we do all, we do not only uh, want to bridge between analog and digital teaching but as you can see here in this picture already we also want to focus uh, on the students we do want to cater for a student-centric approach with even a focus on well-being. And I'm definitely uh, convinced that uh, these uh, key blocks that you can see here in the screen will be um, uh, introduced further by our experts. Okay, um, so active learning um I, I hope i hope many of you have heard about active learning and what it is um but perhaps some of you have just heard of it and and have no idea what it really covers this term 
Well, let us uh, dive into theoretically to um, have our experts have their say afterwards. But active learning is a very broad educational approach uh, that promotes student engagement and participation in the learning process. So what does it do? It actually encourages students to take an active role in their education rather than passively absorbing information. I do think we all agree that this, um, yeah, that this, this uh, helps students in many ways. I'll, I'll get back to that a little later. Now, um, instead, of, so instead of simply listening to uh, lecturers or, or reading textbooks, students engage with the course material through various activities. And active does not mean, you know, jumping or running around. It is just, uh, could be having a discussion, could be thinking about a problem together with someone else. And it shifts the focus from the teacher as a sole source of knowledge to students as uh, active participants in, again, in their own learning journey. So we give them ownership in uh, their learning. Do you want some examples? Of course you do. Um, and it will be very comforting for you if I start giving examples, because as a teacher, you will probably recognize quite a few of these active learning situations that you perhaps were not aware of that you have been using them for ages. Um, I, I uh, mentioned it before, the group discussion, having a talk with your neighboring class about a topic that was just explained by a teacher is a very powerful way of active learning. Um, we could uh, also have a look at problem-based learning. Okay, there is, a, there is this problem. How are you going to solve this? Um, this, this, not, this is not something what would, um, well, what would be tackled when a teacher would be uh, teaching one directionally. So problem-based learning is also a very powerful way of active learning. Something that's uh, quite common already, I think, uh, is a flipped classroom model. So we do uh, have, uh, we do give the, the learner, the student, we give them some responsibility in taking their own pace in learning, in, um, in be feeling responsible about the progress made in the learning with a flipped classroom model. Um, another, another example, uh, that's also very easy to implement and for which you do not have uh, or for which you do not need any, any technology. That's the think, pair, share uh, methodology in which a teacher poses a question, um, has the students think about it individually without communication, so individually, then discuss it with a partner and then share their thoughts with the class. And this method uh, encourages definitely active participation and reflection. So you cannot hide as a teach as a student uh, with a think pair share uh, model. Of course, role playing simulations, these kind of things also very much help uh, students be the owner of their learning. Um, I could go on and on. Uh, but there are two more um, examples of, uh, of, of active learning that I'd love to share with you. Because gamification, for instance, Gamification is true uh, active learning methodology. You've all probably heard of Kahoot. Um, I, as a former teacher, experienced that doing Kahoot quizzes with the same questions as a, a, a quiz on or a test on paper would tremendously differ in student engagement. Even if you uh, give the same content to the students, or even if you try to make them learn the same topics, the same content, gamification will tremendously help um, students feel engaged and involved. Um, and, and another one, a last one, uh, as an example of, of active learning that I would love to uh, share with you, is um, something that uh, helps both students and teachers. And that's the use of exit tickets. I don't know if you know exit tickets, but an exit ticket uh, can be used as a, a reflection at the end of the class. So the instructor, the teacher might ask the, the students at the end of class to
to write down the most important concept that they learned that day or um, the perhaps the items that they found really confusing during class. And so that is very, very valuable feedback, both for the instructor, for the teacher and the students experience in class. So exit tickets are really interesting to do so. The good thing is that technology can help here um, explore the ways you can um, you can uh, you can try out using these forms of active learning. So these are examples of, of active, active learning, but why would you do so? Why? What are the most, uh, let's say, recognized uh, benefits of active learning? Well, there has been quite some research. I'm not going to uh, um, to, to share around a research papers. If you if you look at it on the internet, you can find quite some valuable research um, that that has been done, and the most um, common benefits that we read in these research papers are improved retention uh, because of the active learning and it's really the, the, the active um, 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 well, attitude of the student that ends up in improved retention. So it helps students retain information more effectively when they engage with the material through discussion, through activities, through hands-on experiences, etc. Um, another and a very valuable uh, aspect or a benefit in our uh, current day society is that it enhances critical thinking. So active learning, it really encourages students to think critically and analyze information from different perspectives. So they learn how to evaluate evidence, uh, make connections between concepts, perhaps even draw their own conclusions, um, especially if you have the, the collaboration going on, if they have to communicate with, uh, with their uh, peers. Um, if you look at, especially when, when we look at uh, um, what is going on in uh, the world of, uh, um, of, of the future, the jobs of the future, uh, we see that uh, some skill that is highly needed in, uh, in the job market that are problem solving skills. So we have difficulties in traditional uh, education to get our students ready for problem solving skills. Um, well, active learning is a way to do so. It involves real world problem solving scenarios, for instance, and students can develop practical skills that are valuable even beyond the classroom. So they learn to apply their knowledge uh, to solve complex issues. Um, it actually challenge, uh, challenges uh, their, uh, their um, yeah, the, the, or no, they, they, they get perhaps uh, kind of an idea of what challenges they might face in their future careers. Now, what else uh, is there as a benefit? Um, motivation and engagement. That's, that's a big challenge for teachers uh, nowadays, not only nowadays, but well, years ago, it, uh, it used to be like that. How to motivate and engage your students? Well, with active learning, um, you make the learning process more enjoyable uh, sometimes. Think of gamification, for instance, without saying that teaching should be a, a, a game <laughs> all the way. Uh, but they're more motivated to participate when they feel actively involved in education. And uh, that can lead to increased attendance and, and participation rates, uh, rates even. And uh, well, a last uh, benefit of, of active learning that I would like to share with you is uh, improved communication skills. And again, in the jobs of the future, this appears to be one of the major skills that uh, our, our future um, workers will need, that is communication skills, group discussions, presentations, collaborate, collaborative projects. So these are, are key um, to perform well in uh, future jobs. And um, so I, I think by now that you understand um, that it is active learning is especially helping to improve some skills, some highly needed skills for uh, our current day students who will be in the job market uh, within a few years. Now, um, I think that's 
that's enough as a, as a theoretical um, background to proceed now to have a look at how does this work in the real world, so in uh, our experts' world. And we're going to listen, as uh, Konstantinos uh, explained this, to three experts from three different countries, uh, Belgium, Spain, and uh, the United States. And uh, the experts, they cover age groups in both primary and secondary education. So I don't know where the audience uh, is coming from right now, but <clears throat> you will definitely uh, understand and recognize a few scenarios, situations um, that are being brought up by our experts. So um, can, I can I ask uh, my experts to briefly introduce uh, themselves? And I'll go with the ladies first, uh, of course. Uh, good morning, Mary. I believe it's um, 17 past 10 in the morning at your place. Is that right? Actually, it's 17 past 11. Ah, uh, 11. Okay. Day oh, sorry, daylight savings that? time changes it. <laughs> okay. So, Mary, tell us about yourself. How Who are you? And uh, Sure. I am... Um, my name is Mary Grabowski, and I come to you from um, Florida. I am um, an experienced educator. I've been teaching for over 13 years. Um, I took a short break from teaching while having my children. So I, I would like to add those years, six years to that 13, because I was actively teaching my own children for some time until they started school. Um, it's funny to hear myself referred to as an expert. Um, I, I, as I was thinking and preparing for this, um, I, I discovered I actually do know a thing or two um, from my experience and um, work in the classroom. I've taught um, young children in preschool as well as uh, children in the elementary grades and. Currently, I have the privilege of being a um, substitute teacher, so I've been working in all different levels in a pre-K through 12th um, grade school. So um, I'm gaining even more exposure and experience um, in the classroom, working in a variety of different settings. Okay, that's good. So um, it's funny to hear, but I think it is an international thing with teachers that uh, they are so humbled to say like, oh, I'm not really an expert. Um, so don't be too shy. Uh, we're all experts here. Um, okay, thank you, Mary. Let's uh, jump to uh, Jordi. Jordi, um, I think um, the weather at your, at your place, the weather is quite worse than uh, at Mary's place, I guess. <laughs> I think so, yeah. So hi, um, I'm Jordi. I'm a P5 teacher from Belgium. I teach ages from 9, 10, 11 years old. Um, and I would say I'm primarily a user of active learning uh, in my classroom. And that I gained through experience because, yeah, we had a lot of, um, yeah, let's call it uh, modern troubles uh, in our school because I give uh, lessons in a big city in Antwerp. Uh, we had a lot of fugitives and we had a lot of uh, problems with uh, language. Uh, children that don't speak a native language, uh, Dutch in my case, um, and we saw that um, we needed a solution or some changes in the way we teach. And that's why I became uh, a firm believer in active learning, because we saw a lot of outcomes, uh, especially in language learning. Okay, that's good. I'm, I'm really excited about hearing about uh, your, uh, your techniques and your um, tips and tricks uh, for, for uh, active learning to involve all students, even if language is an issue. Thank you so much. And um, well, let's uh, head away from the rain to sunny Spain, I hope, Ben. Yes, my name is Ben. My name is okay. Ben Radin. Uh, I'm the head of Key Stage 4 at the British College of Gabar. Um, I've been here now for a year and a half, and I'm really looking forward to uh, sort of the sort of sharing this presentation with you. Um, Constantinus, just to say there's a terrible echo um, at the moment, but um, I have been here for um, now about a year and a half, 
and the I understand that there's a lot of active learning that's actually um, implemented and has been over for a while. Um, and I think it's so important to actually really involve the children in their own learning. It starts with ideas of metacognition. Uh, so I, I'll come at it from a more uh, leadership point of view uh, rather than um, the classroom base. Thank you. Yes, okay, thank you. But that's a valuable insight as well. I'm sure people will uh, relate to your uh, position as well. <clears throat> And um, um, so that, that will definitely be interesting to hear from you. Um, good. So let's see. Um, first question. And uh, perhaps, uh, Jordi, if I can start with you. So you've been quite um, confident, confident in, in uh, using the active learning principle in your classroom. Um, I've introduced a few techniques and examples. But tell us more about uh, your expertise. Um, how do you implement active learning in classroom? And perhaps, well, why don't you start, I don't know, from a, a practical example, something that works? So um, I thought, uh, I told you already that we use it a lot um, because we have a lot of problems with our language, uh, because uh, the native tongue with a lot of our children isn't uh, Dutch. And it's, it's uh, the language that you speak at school. Um, so, speaking chances with our children in the traditional way, just raising their hands and pointing at the children, it didn't work. Um, there were a lot of students, the <laughs> students are used to looking at you and waiting till you get them, give them a chance to speak and then they'll speak. Because that's when they'll think. But I want them to think uh, pretty much all the time. And that's when we learned, yeah, we'd have to, to yeah, find a way how we can interact with children and how we can get them to interact with each other, get the more chances to speak with each other. And that's um, how we came across active learning and the, the different ways to use it. Um, in my classroom, I use it pretty much daily and it's small little things that I changed about the way that I teach. Um, not asking questions in a global group, but pairing them together back and forth, like, like uh, ping pong, for example. He, the, the um, neighbor poses a question, they give an answer, he gives an answer, he gives an answer, back and forth with each other. It's, it's something really simple, but it's pretty effective. Um, and I do it pretty much on the daily. Um, that's offline. Online, I get them to, to uh, share lessons um, via my computer. They uh, work on them, they interact with the lesson. Um, Gamification is something I use not on the daily, but uh, pretty much weekly. Um, using um, games to learn different words, uh, sentences, grammar, for example, is something that uh, I use a lot uh, in gamification. Um, I'm a firm believer um, in the, the I3 learn cubes um, because they can uh, help me to get a really quick uh, glance of whether children got what I was teaching or not um, by turning the cubes and giving a really quick answer yes or no or doing a really big a really a quick pop quiz uh, different questions different answers multiple choice who got it who didn't get it um, and then I can uh, interact with those students and get to to yeah um, be very quick um, with solving um, problems that might still be there after I taught a specific subject Okay, very interesting. Um, I've, I've got a question for you to, to go on about that, but first I, I want to uh, have a, um, give the word to Mary. Mary, how do you implement active learning in the classroom? Or perhaps even, as you, as you told me, um, you've been teaching at home as well, active learning is all over the place, I guess. So can you give uh, us a few examples of how you implement active learning? Uh, with your students. As I was preparing for this, is a quote I found and I really, that resonated with me a lot is that from Charlotte Mason. And she says that education is an atmosphere, a discipline and a life. And so for me, setting up an atmos a classroom atmosphere is very fundamental in creating an environment 
that will promote active learning. Um, so I, I was a homeschooling mom for one year. And so what did that mean in my home? That meant um, setting up a space in my home where there was materials available to my children, um, accessible to them on their level. Um, you know, everything was ordered in a way that can be um, easily taken from the shelf and put back on the shelf. Um, and, and the same can be true in a classroom. Um, the classroom has to be set up to so the children can orient themselves to, to what is being taught. Um, I think it is important to um, have not an overstimulation of the atmosphere being set up, but, but everything in the room should have a purpose and should have, um, th there should be something. So as the student who is disengaged for the moment is, you know, wandering off that perhaps they're, they're wandering off and they see, you know, a multiplication board and they can wonder about the numbers so that everything has a purpose. So, um, I think it starts with setting up the space um, and then, you know, you move into the details from, from there. Okay, indeed. I, I see some parallels between your story and Jordi's already. Um, you both uh, say like, uh, okay, you have to set up a few, a few things, uh, routines, uh, discipline, things like that can help uh, active learning work actually. Uh, before I go any deeper here, um, let's hope, uh, Ben, you had some sound issues, I understood. Let's hope that the sound issues are uh, completely gone. I know that you are not in uh, teaching in a class, but do you get any feedback from your teachers, perhaps, or do you have, from a, a management pr perspective, any ideas about how active learning is implemented uh, in your school? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, I'm back and that sounds good. So <laughs> let's carry on. Um, yes, so um, in the classroom, uh, I do a bit of uh, teaching. Uh, I actually teach 11 year olds and 18 year olds. So both ends of the secondary spectrum. Um, and a lot of the uh, techniques are similar ones. I mean, it really does lend itself to casting and act and, and that whole flipped uh, classroom um paradigm as well so it's it's really it really lets itself uh particularly with the, the boards being interactive just by the nature by dint of themselves um anything that we do well it tends to be everything that we do on them and getting the students to actually be involved in them actually uh really 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 sort of gets them thinking at a more a deep level um from a from a uh, leadership point of view, it's obviously the, uh, we're talking a little bit about um, it's, it, it, you have retention, uh, but there's also the, out, the, the other side of it, which are outcomes. And because as a, as a teacher and uh, as a leader, uh, you want to have the students have the best toolkits um, to actually uh, attain the best they can. And part of it, I, believe because of the nature that some you know, everything's a little bit different uh, because it's not passive uh, it builds up notions of resilience as well so it's actually really that sort of strength um, of being and the uh, ability to adapt to new sexual situations being dynamic uh, and having multifaceted learning approach it's really really important so yeah we, we value it extremely highly uh, in, in so much. We actually had a, uh, I gave part of a CBD, uh, which I think is very, very important in a school um, to actually sort of look at the practical side of, of the approaches. So we value it as a leadership as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's something integral to um, a dynamic learning environment. Excellent. Okay, good. Um, you've you've been touching uh, this issue or this this question a little bit already. I was uh, trying to reach out for what are the benefits. Now you have been mainly focusing on the benefits for the students. Uh, I can understand, so they feel engaged. Uh, it it builds uh, they uh, or they 
develop the ability to uh, to adapt. That's uh, that's also very interesting. Are there any benefits for you as a teacher? And uh, I don't know. Let's uh, yeah, Mary, go for it. For the teacher, uh, I think yeah, uh, you were okay. muted. So could you? Yeah. Sorry. Are you speaking specifically about the benefits of using the um, I3 technologies um, or just active learning in general? Uh, active learning in general. If, okay. if, if technology helps. Well, both. Uh, okay, yeah, I, can, yeah, I can do both. So I know um, I, if, for, for us, before I was, when I was teaching at our school um, this past year, before we had our um, technology installed, for the first part of the year, all I had was, you know, the whiteboard. And um, when I would be going over procedures, for example, with my seven-year-old classroom and how to, you know, do a, a, a simple paper and pencil worksheet, I go up and I tape my, my paper on the board and try to write it in a color that they would see. And it was like, once I had the technology incorporated, um, I was able to then you know, take whatever it was that they were looking on or working on and display it and take them when they're so young, it's so important to go like step by step on how to go through some material that they're working on. Um, and so it, that to me was like a huge help. Um, and now even when I go into classrooms and I, I see some people who are um, some teachers that are not, uh, they're nervous with to use the technology or they don't have maybe as much um, exposure training and I see them doing things the old way I want to jump in and say oh there's it's so much easier it's so much more helpful um, students that are actively learning and actively engaged are are going to have less behavioral problems um, you know that it is we we learn through you know creating um, neural connections in our minds and if, if we're happy and experiencing something in a, in a pleasurable way, the learning is going to, to come across very smoothly and, and you're going to have less classroom management issues if children are actively learning. Of course, that comes, you have to, like I said, set up the parameters of environment and you know behavior management procedures and things like that. But generally speaking, children who are active participants in their learning are going to be better behaved and they're going to have um, better output and they're going to learn. Um, those exit tickets are going to be filled with, oh, you know, I, I did learn something today and it was fun. Um, and so you have to kind of guide them to learn while they're having fun <laughs> in, in the process. I think that is that is one wonderful example indeed. Uh, so the the fact that you've got less behavioral problems because of active learning, and it perfectly makes sense actually, because you they're the owners of their learning, so the the students have to uh, to carry this responsibility. Um, does anything sound familiar to you, uh, Jordi, or do you see also some some benefits for uh, uh, students and teachers? Yes, I do actually, uh, because um, we take it a step further than Mary, um, because all our students in my classroom have a um, digital device. Uh, we don't do a lot of things on paper anymore. Um, and that helps me to, to differentiate very quickly. If I see that students have a problem with this or even a better thing, students are very good at something, I can get them to, to work actively on something else. I can get them to engage with the things I'm doing uh, on my screen, for example, and show answers to the rest of the classroom. Uh, because uh, this student is, uh, has found this solution for this problem. What do you think about it? And I can show it um, in, in real time um, to the rest of the classroom. And they get to see what the other children were thinking about. Uh, for example, making um, mind maps all together at once. We don't have to sit around each other. We can do it uh, on our own tables. Uh, if, if we have to do it very quickly, for example, we can show everything on my screen, on the, on the big screen um, directly. Or even better, um, get them to, to come to the front. Other students work at their table, interact with each other, interact with me. Um, and that's something um, that's a big benefit for me is that I get a lot of interaction with the children. 
because I said uh, speaking and language is kind of a barrier uh, for my students. Me getting to speak to my students um, as much as possible and as, as, as yeah, normal as possible, um, maybe not focusing on language, but focusing on, on a problem that we have and we have to find a solution for the problem is something that, yeah, they're actively speaking, um, but they're also working on something else. Um, and that's, for me, a big benefit, I find. Um, that we're working on something different and we're working on different um, subjects and maybe an underlying goal that we have and uh, that we're working on uh, several things at once. Yes, yeah, splendid. I even I even sensed uh, an, an, uh, another added value that sneaked in between the lines that you were talking uh, about. Oh, it helps me because I do not have to... Um, well, uh, go around at every desk to to check what they're doing. So actually, you're you're um, um, you're finding some extra time for yourself, uh, which is I understand a huge uh, challenge for teachers all over the world. Like I've got I don't have enough time to uh, check every kid's uh, work. And another thing which is which is really beautiful uh, in your example is that um, you also highlight the good performers. So it's not only active learning in favor of you know the ones that lag a little bit behind or that need some support, but also the ones that need some support on the other side of the spectrum uh, that need to be challenged. Um, so I like that uh, quite a lot. Thank you, Jody, for uh, that part of your testimonial. Um, ben, um, have you had any comments from your colleagues or from yourself, perhaps, in terms of um, benefits for, for students and teacher, teachers uh, because of active learning? Yes, um, thank you. Yeah, um, I agree with you, Jeroen. Um, Jordi's example just now, um, particularly about the levels, the ability to differentiate and uh, um, hold, hold the uh, classroom accountable um, is, is, is quite exciting, and especially with the rollout of devices uh, and their actual as I mentioned before, Chromecasting and the ability to um, project onto the interactive uh, i3 whiteboard as well. Um, but I think the one of the, it comes on to the fact that one of the difficulties um, of active learning sometimes is perceived uh, to be extremely resource heavy and actually create more, more of an issue. Um, uh, so, but at the same time, the, the key thing is to be smart. Um, and it doesn't have to be, and it shouldn't be, because ideas such as flip the classroom mean that a lot of the teacher time and that time coming back um, can be sort of removed if it's properly set up uh, and thought out as well. So the whole notion that it is uh, more resource heavy, I, I, I disagree with um, in itself. So that's a benefit for the teacher. When it comes to the students, um, yes, I think I because think it gives them a better idea of how they learn uh, and what actually essentially floats their boat, um, what actually makes them tick and how best they can apply that in real world situations as well. So, yes, I, th I think it's, it's really, it's really, really important that, um, you know, it's that mental note, not, not going passively dictating or things like that, chalk and talk. Um, so it is, yeah, it is integral to a, a rich and a dynamic classroom. Okay, thank you uh, so much, Ben. You're actually jumping to my next question by answering the previous question, which is a good thing, uh, because you mentioned already uh, difficulties. For, I cannot, uh, okay, let's be honest. Um, life in education is not always uh, the brightest part of, uh, of one's day. So sometimes things go horribly wrong. Um, but the beauty of it, Ben, as you told it, is that you can bend it uh, in, in a positive way. Like if you say it's resource heavy and indeed uh, technology, even for education is quite uh, expensive uh, sometimes, um, uh, but you can be smart indeed and, and use technology in, uh, in an innovative way. Um, the flipped classroom, I don't know, perhaps, um, have you had any experience or uh, with, with that, um, Jordi or uh, Mary? 
I don't have experience with the flipped classroom because I teach P5 children and because um, the, the um, how should I say it, the global citizenship of my children isn't as big and the, the um, I know the word in Dutch, it's a uh, leefwereld, I don't know how to say it in English. Um, the, the perception of the world for my children is pretty small. They know two streets down, they know um, the shop at the, the end of the street, they know um, the soccer, um, where they have to play soccer and that's it. Um, getting to, to study on their own at home, there isn't much time and room for them. Um, but I wanted to jump on something that uh, Ben said about being resource heavy. And that may be uh, uh, yeah, something that's a, a difficulty. Um, I don't think it's resource heavy. I just think it's another way of thinking. When you um, prepare your lessons, you just have to think, oh, of, of, in my case, um, where are students going to, to want to think more? And that's something, um, okay, I'm preparing a lesson for mathematics. Um, this subject isn't going to go like I wanted to um, from my previous experiences in the past years. Um, how can I change this? And that's something um, I find that a lot of uh, teachers in my school are doing. What do the children need to change? What do they need to learn? That's true, but what can you change as a teacher to get your children there? And that's something that active learning has, has done for me, um, thinking of another way of how I can teach my children has given me a lot of benefits and a lot of uh, extra, yeah, extra resources in my case. For example, the, the IMO cubes that I, I use a lot, every classroom needs chairs. You can't stand all day in your classroom. So that's something that's an extra um, benefit for me. It's an extra resource for me. Everyone needs a chair. Why not use your chair as an extra opportunity or an extra way to, to um, yeah, help your learning? So that's, that's how I think about that stuff. OK, that, that's a very interesting uh, point, Jordi. Can I come back to you? I'll leave you some time to, uh, to think it over. Um, because you said, like, OK, we have to, uh, for instance, mathematics, we have to think differently. Uh, can you uh, give us an example of uh, how, you, um, how you do that? Really a concrete example. How do you do um, active learning with mathematics? Uh, think about it. I'll, I'll first go to Mary. Uh, to get uh, some ideas from her side uh, in, in difficulties that uh, she has experienced perhaps with uh, active learning and perhaps how to overcome it. Um, the idea of a flipped classroom, I, that's, that's new terminology to me. Can you possibly expand on, on that a little bit? Because I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not the only one that's that's new new terminology for what what does that mean flipped classroom uh, okay yeah flipped classroom so um in in one sentence and the uh, experts in flipped classroom will will attack me probably now but um you as a teacher you prepare some content um on on video for instance uh you share the video content with your students and students go through the video perhaps as homework uh, get back to class know the the theoretical background for instance of that topic that is being taught in class and so they don't have to listen to the front of class teaching teacher um, and they can immediately jump into examples the benefit of it is that the teacher is um, can immediately help where help is needed for those who did not fully get it uh, at home Another added value of the flipped classroom model is that um, when the theory, theory is taught in class, um, it's a one shot. So if you've heard it, you've heard it. If you haven't heard it, you have to uh, um, yeah, uh, ask for uh, some, some repetition. Um, but not all students do that. Uh, while with the flipped classroom methodology, you can watch it over again um, without any issues. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. It's actually very fascinating. So my understanding is that it, it helps the children to create some prior knowledge before coming into class. And then when you're in the classroom, you can jump right into 
working through, for example, a, a math, if you're teaching an algorithm or something, and you can begin the process of working on the math algorithms in class because they've already had time to digest the procedure uh, on their own time. Correct? Okay. Yeah. Yes. So um, I think some some problems for for me as an educator in you know creating a space like that is and I think you touched on it is is the time it to do any of these things requires um time to prepare and time to create and um there's such a limited resource on time that um you know you can be burnt out so quickly um so I think you know ad administrators need to be very mindful of that in, in in helping to give the teachers the opportunity to have time to to create this content, to have time to create um, meaningful, active lessons for their children, because it's not just you know something that can can be just written down very quickly. It it takes time, and I think it, I would be hard pressed to find a teacher that doesn't di disagree with me or that doesn't agree with me on that point. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, and I think it's a global thing. Um, uh, a lot is expected um, in terms of responsibilities from teachers uh, nowadays. And uh, yeah, so um, definitely time is not um, uh, on the teacher's side quite often indeed. Um, Shodi, you have had some time. Can you give us an example? <laughs> Sure. Um, I was thinking about a topic that I uh, teach every year. It's about uh, mathematics uh, I was talking about. And it's uh, profit and loss. It's something that we teach in P5. Uh, when is your shop profitable? Um, it's something that has to do with global citizenship as well. But that's an old other story. Um, all children um, can relate to a story that I tell at the moment. This year, I'll probably tell a story about the Olympic Games and I want to sell jerseys for the Olympic Games. Um, because um, that's something that the children will know oh, the Olympic Games are coming. Um, when can we sell jerseys? Oh, we buy them from somewhere for 20 euros. Um, how much would you sell them for? They have to teach, uh, they have to think the first time, how does profit and loss work? Okay, um, some examples. Second lesson, I'll um, get the students to talk to each other. What would you, your store be? What would you sell? When will your store be profitable? Um, when, um, how would you um, account for your shop being profitable or um, losing money? How would you um, calculate it without me telling something? I would just tell my story. I want to sell jerseys for the Olympic game. Um, I want to sell them for 20 euros. I buy them for 20 euros. How much would I sell them for? And then I'll get to um, them to think about it. They maybe do it in groups. Um, how would their store look? What would they sell? Where would they get their inventory? Um, how much profit would they make? Would they have a good store or not? Um, and that's um, pretty, for example, the second lesson. Third lesson would be something about gamification. Um, in the Ivory Learn Hub, you can make activities. I would make um, a game for multiple choice. Uh, this store, would it be profitable? With a small group of my students, other group um, would make um, questions and answers for each other. For example, I, I have this store, uh, I'll sell uh, footballs for five euros, I'll buy them for 10 euros. I'll, how much money do I lose or do I gain? Um, that's something. Um, and I'm working on stuff three times already. And that's, yeah, something I could think of very quickly that I pretty much use every year. Um, but I saw when I was just teaching them, okay, you have this in a little booklet. Okay, I want to sell it for that. I buy it for that price. What is my profit? What is my loss? They would be like, yeah, yeah, we know a store. Done. When I'm telling them a story, when they um, re-evaluate what I told already, um, they are actively thinking about, okay, the teacher wants his store. Oh, how can we help him with his store? Um, how can we um, play this game so that he gets a lot of money? Or <laughs> in the other sense, how can we make the teacher lose money? Um, the, the multiple choice questions, oh, what's the, the right answer? How can we calculate? But how can we gain points as well? We want to, to uh, win the game. We want to do it as quickly as possible. But we're also calculating uh, our profit or the loss uh, in our store. 
Okay, that, that's really clarifying. Uh, thank you so much. And I, you mentioned it yourself. It's it's kind of a problem based learning, indeed. So you you present a problem and you ask them to uh, to solve it instead of starting from uh, the mathematics booklet. Okay, um, I'm having a quick look at time. We've got some ten minutes left. Um, can I very quickly ask uh, the three of you, perhaps Ben, uh, starting with you? Um, as, is there any, uh, you've mentioned, the three of you have mentioned already uh, technology. Is there any tech tool, tech product that makes active learning work in your school? Um, best practice example, perhaps, of, uh, of educational products, uh, tech products, perhaps. Perhaps I3 products uh, that definitely bring active learning to the next level. Ben. So um, yeah, Google. Um, so basically, we've got i3 suites in every single classroom now. So it does actually ramp it up a, a notch. So it does. We have that access um, to it. Um, obviously, with the, we've got sort of quite a varied, varied uh, tech stack. Um, so we got um, we, we're a Google-based school as well. So there's the opportunity to sort of share documents, share the whole. Um, the, the whole uh, Google Drive uh, sort of ecosystem as well. Um, we, in addition to that, we have you know a variety of different packages that we use, and they actually help um, remove a lot of the barriers to active learning uh, by being sort of pre-existing resources uh, as well, sort of thing. So they just actually meld quite nicely with um, the technological side of things. Um, coming back to one of one of that challenge that we mentioned before um, in the production of resources, it's really there's so many things out there now with uh, pre-produced off-the-shelf resources, uh, pre-produced off-the-shelf packages. But there's also if you wanted a quiz or something like that, or something that's uh, that you can quickly shove into a Kahoot. You've obviously got now um, AI such as ChatGPT. So it also that's as a teacher's tool rather than. Um, which is ever so important and it does cut that time down a lot um so yes i, I think the so the interactive uh, the um, whole interactive side of the the boards does really really help um and it's everything from getting students to come up to annotate and being able to then um save that particular board then being then able to take it home uh, lends it lends itself very very well to the whole um uh, sort of I don't know, very uh, variation in learning. It's coming back to that sort of dynamic classroom environment. But uh, yeah, does that answer your question? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and as everyone will will uh, understand that um, no single school is the same. So every every school has got different uh, approaches, different opportunities, different challenges. So um, yeah, if that works for your school, that that is perfectly okay. Thank you so much. Um, Mary, what about you? Have you had any experience in, in ed tech tools or i3 products that would work uh, in your classroom? Sure. Um, well, I want to say first, the school that I'm at currently is a very, it's a classical school. So um, where um, many schools nowadays have like students with all, every student has a device and things like that. Our school is very, intentional about technology use. And so there, the idea is um, the children still are learning a lot with, with pen and paper and, and in traditional ways of learning. However, they do incorporate um, technology and the school that I'm at has, um, you know, boards, or I don't know what you call them in every, every classroom. And I really like, Ben reminded me, the one thing I really loved is that we could create something in the classroom um, and everybody has, you know, devices at home and whatnot, but we could create something in the classroom, a, a, a chart or a board, and I could send that home so easily for the students to, to then study from or to 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 look over or share with their, their parents. Um, that was an incredible, that added incredible value to, to my time instead of having to recreate something. Um, the other thing that I witnessed um, when the boards were being put in and brought into us, similar to um, 
oh my gosh, I'm not going to say your name correctly. Not Ben, the other guy, <laughs> similar to him. Our, our, our Jordi, Jordi, yeah. Jordi, yes. We live in a very small town um, in, in the middle of the state of Florida, basically like in the swamp. And so <laughs> the students have a very limited, um, a lot of them, the young students, a limited worldview. And um, we were able to connect with a school in Belgium and the students were interacting with a classroom there. And it was so beautiful to see and um, to observe as a, as a kind of a spectator in this, um, how the students could learn from each other in that way. So bringing, bringing the technology into the classroom can have this benefit of, of um, opening their worldview globally to see and interact with students all the way in, in Belgium who you know are getting ready to leave the classroom and put on their coats in negative degree weather where students in Florida don't even understand what a negative number is because we have very limited exposure to that. Um, so I, I, I think it can be very engaging and offer a lot of um, global opportunity for interactive um, opportunities with other, other places around the world. Oh, that's a very, um, yeah, heartwarming uh, experience, and I can imagine. Uh, so actually, what you're basically saying is that the the, uh, the technology is breaking down the classroom walls and opening, uh, well, the, the views of the students to the world, uh, which is also um, digital citizenship, learning and, uh, and getting to know the world. Uh, beautiful example. Thank you so much. Um, Shodi, any thoughts from your side on how technology and tools can uh, make active learning work. Yeah, I'm going to uh, pass one, uh, Mary, for this one um, about the global citizenship and uh, getting to know uh, other places and um, broadening their view on the world uh, for the students um, with the help of technology. Um, for me, as an i3 ambassador, I use uh, i3 Learn Hub. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, pretty much daily. Um, it helped me um, develop my lesson plans, develop my lessons in specific. Um, but I'm also not the guy that's going to tell you, oh, I only use i3 uh, Learn Hub because uh, at school we use a lot of uh, Microsoft products as well. And that's something um, we, we started with Microsoft. Um, we didn't go with Google uh, for the professional reason um, because when, um, in my experience in Europe, when they go to uh, work uh, at an older age, uh, Microsoft still has a huge benefit and a huge um, market share of the professional uh, careers. Now, so that's like something that we wanted to um, get along with. But uh, we noticed that Microsoft didn't have uh, ways to interact with each other at a student level. Right now they have it, but we went to uh, i3 Learn Hub and i3 Technologies because, um, yeah, they um, gave us um, opportunities and they um, wanted to think with the teachers about how they developed uh, their product. And that helped me a lot because I know uh, a couple of people uh, from Belgium, for example, Anneke from i3 LearnUp and i3 Technologies. When, they, when we talk to each other, we get a lot of ideas. She helps me with my students. I help them a bit with uh, how they can implement different things in software. Um, and that's what I love about the company. You get feedback and you will be heard. I mean, when I give a um, recommendation, they will listen to me. And that's something I missed with Microsoft. They have a great team of um, uh, software developers there, but their main focus is selling. And that's something I didn't like about it. And that's something in the ecosystem of uh, I three technologies that I, yeah, I love uh, the the IMO cubes that I use. Um, my students sit on them. I said I don't have chairs in my classroom. I use only the the IMO cubes. Um, I use the uh, I three Learn Hub pretty much on the daily in conjunction with uh, products from my, uh, Microsoft. For example, Minecraft is something that I use uh, pretty frequently to have my gamification to the next level. Um, but it's all adjacent uh, to each other. Okay, that's um, well. That's uh, that's quite amazing, um, and I think quite a, a few 
um, people in the audience will be very jealous of uh, how far you are in, in uh, active learning and, uh, and making the combination with uh, technology. So I hope, I hope uh, people um, watching and listening have been learning quite a lot. We're just over an hour right now. Um, I have a quick check with uh, Konstantinos if there are any questions from the um, from the uh, audience, um, and if not, if uh, there is room for questions right now. So thanks a lot uh, for this very very inspiring discussion and very nice to hear uh, all of you sharing your experiences. Uh, there is not uh, specific questions, but I would give a very quick one that came to mind when uh, when you started the conversation and then kind of developed, and then we can close, I think. And it's, what would you suggest? Because you mentioned all these very cool things, but uh, what we see very much at European SchoolNet is that very often teachers that have not been exposed to technology or uh, different pedagogies, um, they are quite afraid or a bit more uh, concerned about starting. So if you could give one piece of advice to a, an educator that is watching us today and uh, wants to start but don't, doesn't know exactly how, uh, what, is a, what is that that you would advise them to do? I, I, I asked uh, one of the experts from their expertise, yeah. uh, what do you think? Yeah, sure, Nico. Yeah, I would say start small. <laughs> That's something that I say to every the teacher in my school. Uh, start with something that you feel comfortable with. We, we can uh, discuss very um, big things here in, in the panel, but start with something very small. Start with not pointing at children. Um, okay, everyone's listening to you or you think they're listening. They're just watching you and they'll start thinking uh, when you point at them. Um, Start by um, having them um, talk to each other, for example. Start very small. It's something that you can implement in, in a second. Um, you can start with that tomorrow. And that's something, yeah, I say to a lot of my, my colleagues, if you start small and you, you that's my maybe another uh, important one, take something that you feel comfortable with. If you start using technology, but you're sorry for my wording, maybe a, a technology dinosaur. <laughs> you don't know how to use technology very well. Don't use it right away. Start with something that you feel comfortable with and that you may be or you want to be familiar with. Uh, and that's my, my biggest advice that uh, I'd give to those uh, people. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Would the other two speakers like to also share? But I would say uh, that I'm a little bit of a, a technology dinosaur or maybe not a digital native myself. And I have found um, it can be very overwhelming as a teacher. It's like one more thing to figure out in your classroom. But I, I would echo what Jordi said and like do simple things that, you know, one little, and as you kind of typically these, you know, products are, are intuitive. And once you start, working with them, it, it, it becomes, you, you build um, procedures in your mind of how to do things and, and to not be afraid of it. Um, so doing, you know, simple things and giving yourself small goals, like today I'm going to learn how to do this and just, and do it. And the fun thing for me as a teacher with young students is as when we got the uh, active learning boards in our room, my students often would know how to do things that I didn't. So I would be there, be like, oh, I don't know how to do this. And they would be saying, oh, Mrs. Grabowski, you go and you push that one and you push that one. And then it, it, we figured it out together and, and that's okay. Um, and it, it allows for cooperative learning. Um, and, and, and they remind me, it really remind me like the steps, like, oh no, you, you, you had to push this one first or whatever. Um, so I, I think, you know, just having that spirit of like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try. I'm going to jump in, and um, and be be okay with failure because just as our students need to fail sometimes to learn, we we too need to to go through that. Um, I like the example my 
My son is in a Montessori school right now, which is very, they teach them practical life skills and they have an iron in the classroom. Um, so this kids can learn the skill of ironing, which is, you know, my husband needs to learn the skill, but anyways, they have the iron and he burned himself on the iron. And I think it, he's okay. Um, but it's that idea that he's now going to learn. He knows that that's not the proper way to handle it. And I think with technology, we have to be willing to to fail in order to succeed and, and not be afraid of that failure. Very, very nice and very, uh, well, this is the right message. I think that we should pass. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ben. Uh, you're muted, and I'm trying to unmute you, and I can't. So, okay, I'll start. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I, I agree with Jordi and Mary. Um, sort of starting small and have that eyes wide open to you know the experiential, experiential learning sort of side of things um, and trial and error. Essentially, it's really really important. Um, there is a lot out there. Um, so just by exposing yourself uh, to sort of those. YouTube videos and things like that on the internet, there's a, there's a lot of information out there which can be overload. So there's nothing more powerful than a really decent uh, piece of professional development, I think. So uh, ask your uh, school leaders to go, whether you can you know, investigate a bit of training and you'll end up with some more hands-on uh, techniques and the ability to actually use them in the classroom. So yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh for your input as well and uh, all of you for, for joining us today and for, of course, Jeroen and I3 Technologies for collaborating with us on this. Just to remind the viewers that, of course, European Schoolnet has a lot of resources for you to help you start with active learning. We have online and on-site courses and other opportunities. So go check us, uh, check the website and all the resources available. And with that, I would like to thank you all, the participants and also the speakers and the experts for joining us today and especially the speakers and the experts for sharing your thoughts and your experience with us. So the webinar will be recorded and will be shared, well, will be uh, saved on the on the platforms, both on Facebook, Twitter and, and YouTube for others that haven't watched it or if you want to come back to it and, and listen to the experiences. So make sure to follow us on social media to hear more about future opportunities for this, this kind of webinars. And I wish you all a very nice evening. Thank you all and uh, see you soon. Thanks so much.